right guys, even here, and in this video, we're gonna make an analysis. See how would Sean Roden do if he competed in the 90s? A few days ago, I made a video about Dorian Yates, who was the reigning champion during the 90s, the bodybuilder who dominated for the majority of the 90s. How would he do at today's Mr. Olympia, 2019 Mr. Olympia? And today we're gonna kinda reverse that, do the opposite, we're gonna place Sean Roden back to Dorian Yates era and see how would Sean do there, haha. <laughs> Are you scared, Sean Roden fans? <laughs> it is gonna be scary for him, <laughs> and uh, let's go, let's just go right into it. Early 90s, early 90s, 91 and 92, I think Sean would beat anybody in those lineups because it was still not monster mass era. And judges were looking for that. Judges were hoping that somebody's gonna bring it. And once Dorian brought it in 1993, they started judging all the shows that way. So, of course, Sean would win in 1991, 1992, and probably all the years before that. But let's go, let's start to 1993. And of course, the winner of the 1993 Mr. Olympia was Dorian Yates, who I actually compared to Sean Roden in a separate video in a very detailed manner. So we're not gonna compare them again, you already know the results, if you don't, check the video. The lineup in the 90s was very, very impressive, all the bodybuilders were looking insane. It was so, so deep, such high quality lineup, compared to the shitty lineup that we have today. Today's lineup is very, very poor, and uh, there was a lot of good bodybuilders during the 90s, and let's go first with Kevin Livroni. And I'm not gonna do a comparison pose by pose for every single competitor that I'm gonna mention here because that video would last at least an hour or even more, probably more, because there is a lot of bodybuilders that I would like to compare with Sean. So first let's go with, with Kevin, let's just analyze him without a photo comparison with comparing every single pose for pose. Let's just go over the whole physique and uh, what do you think? Who do you find more impressive, Kevin Lavroni or Sean Roden? And I'm sure all of you have the same answer. Of course, of course, Kevin Leveroni at his best is even comparable to Phil Heath. Of course, he wouldn't beat Phil Heath at his best because of the back and because of the conditioning. But from the front and from the sides, it would be close. It would be close. I mean, uh, Kevin had a proper midsection, but uh, Phil Heath is not the subject here. It's Sean, who is the current winner. And what do I think? Is Sean better bodybuilder than Kevin? Hell no. Hell no, man. Kevin, man. I mean, I think he had the best genetics in the history of the world ever. If he pushed it a little bit harder, he would probably be like a reigning champ for who knows how many years. I think he had much better genetics than Dorian Yates. He had those freaky 3D looking muscle. And it's so crazy to think that actually Kevin turned pro in 1992 by winning, I think, USA Nationals. Then he won Night of Champions, which was his pro debut, he won it, of course, and qualified for the Mr. Olympia, where he took second place, imagine that, all in one year, second place right next to Dorian Yates. And the thing is, later after that competition, he had a injury, a pack tear, and afterwards he never really trained as hard, he was never as determined to succeed, he was basically having fun all year round and only preparing for like four months before the competition and still, you know, he was taking second place at the Mr. Olympia and if he was actually giving it all of his, I think he would be the champion instead of Dorian, but he didn't and uh, what do I think, is he better than Sean Roden? Kevin at his best and Sean Roden at his best, Kevin wins, I have no doubt about it. So let's go now with another bodybuilder and let's go for example with Sean Ray. And this one is debatable, it's not so obvious as it is with Kevin Leveroni, but still, I prefer Sean Ray's physique. I think it was more complete, I think he had better arms, fuller chest, better shape overall, I just liked his symmetry and his proportions more than I like Sean's. And his stomach was in check, midsection was beautiful actually, one of the best ones ever. So it would be close, I'm sure, and it depends on the conditioning quite a bit, but I, I can't really make this decision, uh, I'm not really sure, it could go either way. Let's go now with uh, Flex Wheeler. Do I think Flex Wheeler is a worse bodybuilder than Sean Roden? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not even a chance. Flex Wheeler, at his best, would absolutely annihilate Sean Roden. He is the sultan of symmetry, he is the legend. 
he is not such a famous and so successful bodybuilder for no reason. He is something special and he is like the favorite physique of all time of many people. Many people love him the most, more than everybody else. And, and that doesn't happen just by accident. That happens because you look freaking impressive. And uh, Flex, Flex is one of the greatest ever. So if these guys clashed at their best, of course, I'd say Flex would win it. I'd say so. I think Sean would have a very hard time against him because of his completeness. He was a very complete bodybuilder, unlike Sean Roden. Sean is complete in terms of having everything conditioned and everything is there. But he does not have as impressive arms as Flex. He does not have as impressive back as Flex had. Same thing goes with his chest and with pretty much his whole body. Sure, Sean Smith's actually is fine for 2019, but uh, it's not fine for the 90s. Not. It's not. Just, you know, it's not. So, I give this win actually to Flex. Then, let's go for example with uh, Nasser al somebody. Do I think Sean was better than Nasser? Absolutely not. Not again. No, sorry. I'm sorry, Sean Roden fans, but this is just my opinion. This is how I see it. I think Nasser was better. I think Nasser was better than Sean. And he would absolutely beat him in pretty much every single pose. He had better and fuller back. His legs were even bigger. The only thing that was better than Sean would be the proportions. The, the length of his legs and... Uh, Basically, a leg length to torso length ratio. That's the only thing that Sean had. But would that be enough to beat him? I don't think so. Maybe Sean was a little bit more defined, but I don't think he was much better. And uh, overall, I would still say that based on the judging criteria the way it is, I'd say Sean would lose this one as well. I think Nasser is better than Sean. Yep. So we also have Lee Priest, who has a lot of fans, and many people find his physique very impressive. But me personally, on the stage, on the stage, I don't think it was that impressive. I think he was lacking a lot in his upper chest, in his overall back, and he was very, very short, almost like a midget. So I don't think he would beat Sean. So yeah, no. I mean, off the stage, in the gym, under great lights, with a great arm pump, because his arms were super impressive, probably the best arms ever. He was very, very impressive, very, very good looking. But on the stage, a lot of his flaws were exposed and I don't think he ever got super crispy conditioned. So I don't think he was better than Sean. I, I don't think, I think Sean will win against Lee Priest. So that's one victory for Sean. And then in the later 90s, after Dorian retired in the 1998 and 1999, we had the champion, of course, Ronnie Coleman. And this is not even worth mentioning. I don't think Sean had any chance against Ronnie. Ronnie would destroy two Sean Rodens, not only one Sean Roden. He would eat him for breakfast, easily, like a snack. It wouldn't be even funny. And uh, so almost the same thing goes with Dorian. I mean, Dorian would probably destroy him, but not as much as Ronnie would. But of course, we already talked about Dorian, so let's not talk about that again. And then we also have a bunch of other bodybuilders who were finishing their careers in the 90s and some of them who were starting their careers in the 90s, like Jay Cutler, who started his career in the 90s, like Vince Taylor, who was pretty much done at that time, and so on. Basically, it's all debatable. If you think I skipped any bodybuilders, any important ones that I should have mentioned, tell me in the comment section below. We can discuss about it in the comments. I will give you my two cents, what I think about them. This is it for now. I think Sean would have a lot of trouble in the 90s. I think he would be out of top 5, top 6 usually. He would be like, maybe top 6. That would be like his placing if he was at his best. Because those guys had some of the best genetics in the history of the world. During the 90s we had so much talent on that stage. Right now we have the best of the best, but the lineups are pretty weak. And during the 90s we had a lot of talent, a lot. So, and everybody was also big. You know, it's not like in the 80s and early 90s. 90, since 1993 and then after, we had a very, very good talented bodybuilders who were big and who were shredded. They had even better conditioning than bodybuilders have today. Most of them, the majority of them, let's be real. So the quality of contenders today is much weaker. And today's champion would be top six in the 90s. And that's my take. That's my opinion. If you think I'm wrong, tell me why am I wrong. If you think I'm right, tell me that I think that I'm right. 
Anyways, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.